In this video, we'll be taking a look at output devices. An output device is any device that can take data stored in a digital form and convert it into another form humans can process, such as sound images or vibration feedback. On the screen now are some of the most common output devices that you'll probably be familiar with. Just like input devices, there are literally thousands of possible output devices. The exam board have limited the list that you need to know about for the exam to the following. We've got actuators, digital light processing projectors, inkjet and laser printers, light emitting diode screens, liquid crystal display projectors, speakers, and 3D printers. We're going to look at each of these now. Just before we go ahead, a little note from the exam board. This section of the syllabus has been greatly simplified for exams that are taking place from 2023 onwards. In the old syllabus, candidates needed to know details of how each output device actually operated. For example, how a laser printer actually replicates a digital image on paper. Now, candidates only need to know what each device does, why it does it, and when it might be used. There are still many textbooks, revision books, and online videos that go into depth about how each device physically functions, and you're no longer going to be examined on this content. So let's start with actuators. Now, although you no longer need to understand physically how each output device works, we will provide a brief description at the start of each output device so you can understand and have some context. So actuators come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Each version is purpose built for a specific function, but they essentially all achieve the same goal, which is to carry out some sort of physical movement. They can be used for a vast array of things, such as starting and stopping a pump or flow control device, opening and closing an automatic door, turning a wheel, opening and closing a valve, starting and stopping conveyor belts, operating an aircraft's wing flaps, and much, much more. Actuators are commonly used in conjunction with a motor to translate digital signals into actual real world movement of physical objects in all manner of ways. They're also used with sensors to control many kinds of mechanisms. The next device to look at is the digital light processing or DLP projector. So DLP systems use millions of micro mirrors arranged in a matrix grid and placed onto the surface of a small microchip within the projector itself. White light is then shone through a rotating colour filter to produce the image, while an angled mirror changes the colour intensity. They're used for projecting a computer output onto a wall, a whiteboard or projection screen, and often used for personal, home and professional settings. They have several advantages over LCD projectors, which we're going to look at next. They provide a higher contrast ratio, smooth video, generally smaller and lighter and thus more portable, and also better suited to dusky or smoky atmospheres and environments. So let's look at the other type of projector technology you need to know about. That's liquid crystal display or LCD projectors. These projectors use three mirror filters to separate an image into its red, green and blue wavelengths. These images are then passed through a prism and recombined. Finally, the full colour image is passed through a lens and projected. Just like before, they are often used for projecting a computer output onto a wall, whiteboard or projection screen, and they can be used for both personal home and professional settings. Now these have some advantages over DLP projectors, so they provide a sharper image, better colour reproduction, and they're typically less expensive, and they're also quieter in their operation. They have a lower power usage, and thus they produce less heat. 
Next up is the first of two printer technologies you need to know about, inkjet printer. So inkjets force tiny droplets of liquid ink through very fine nozzles onto a sheet of paper to replicate a di digital document or image. What are they typically used for? Well, they're most commonly used for small scale print jobs. They're usually cheaper and smaller, so they're very popular for personal and home use. They are excellent for printing out high quality photos, especially when used in conjunction with specialist photo paper. So why are they required? Well, even now in this age of technology, there's still a need to produce physical copies of information stored in electronic format. Printouts or hard copies can be easily transported and viewed at any time without the need for an electronic device or an active internet connection. So laser printers are different in that they use toner cartridge. These contain powdered, electro-optically charged ink. Using a laser, a mirror image of the printer page is drawn onto a drum by creating negatively charged areas. The drum then picks up the positively charged ink particles and bonds them with a sheet of paper using heat. Now, these produce high quality but inexpensive printing. They are very fast and they're definitely accurate for non-color documents and images. They have a lower running cost per page compared to an inkjet printer. And so these are often found in non-personal areas like schools and offices. The reason why they're required is very much similar to inkjet printers. There's still a need to print out physical copies of information held in electronic format. Next up, we're going to look at two types of screen technology you need to know about. The first is liquid crystal or LCD screens. Now these are made up of millions of tiny liquid crystals. And these crystals form effectively a matrix of pixels, which can be affected by changes in applied electric fields. LCD screens require some form of backlighting, often produced by a fluorescent lamp or LED. They're used for TVs, monitors, laptops and mobile phones, but they're gradually being phased out in favour of newer technologies such as LED and OLED. Obviously, we need to be able to output digital information in a visual way. And although display technology is constantly evolving, there will probably always be a need for visual display screens in some form. The other display technology is light emitting diode or LED screens. Now, these displays use tiny light emitting diodes to produce a bright image almost instantly without the need for any additional backlighting. They're replacing LCD displays in more and more situations, including typical home use TVs, monitors, laptops and mobile devices. It's very easy for multiple LED screens to be joined together, making them ideal for very large displays using things like concerts, festivals and sporting events. LED technology is generally considered better than LCD because it offers better image quality and viewing angles, has a longer lifespan and requires no additional backlighting, so they can be thinner and lighter. The next output device we look at are speakers. And essentially a speaker is the counterpart to a microphone and input device and works in the opposite way. A digital representation of a sound is passed through a digital to analog converter, a DAC, which can be further boosted by an amplifier before being passed to a speaker to create analog sound waves. Obviously speakers are used in a wide variety of situations, TV, films, video games, live music, music recording, playback, alarm systems and more. Speakers provide us with a way to take digital sounds or recordings and output them in a form that can be heard by the human ear. Next up are 3D printers. 
So these are based on a combination of inkjet and laser printer technology. And 3D printers work by depositing layers of material, often plastic, on top of each other to slowly build up a 3D object. They can, however, also use powdered resin or metal, paper, ceramic, concrete, and even certain types of foods. They're used to make inexpensive custom-made prosthetics, spare parts. They're used in engineering to create rapid prototypes of objects, also to create a wide range of personalized items, such as key rings. 3D printing allows us to produce real-world models of virtual objects that have been created using computer aid design software. It can create objects with intricate internal spaces and even moving parts, and it provides a means of manufacturing with minimum waste. Now, we've got a little more to talk about in this video, but before we go any further, pause and take some notes on the eight different output devices that we've gone through. So in the last two videos, we've talked about input and output devices. And they are the devices that you will be tested and examined on. However, obviously the lines are slightly more blurred. For example, here's a typical gaming controller for a console. Is this an input or an output device? Well, we can easily argue this is an input device. Uh, I can use the, the D-pads, the controllers, the buttons. They're all receiving my input presses and sending those signals to the console. Of course, most modern uh, console controllers also have a little speaker built in, allowing to output sound through the speaker. And they typically all have vibration feedback being performed by motors and actuators. So it's an output device as well. Now, as far as the exams are concerned, you could consider a game controller as a primary input device, even though it's one that's not covered. But be aware that lines can sometimes be blurry, so make sure in your exam to justify your answer. What's a more useful skill, having now learned about a range of typical input and output devices, is to be able to justify appropriate devices for a specific situation. So here we see a cash point machine. What input and output devices might be used as part of this cash point system? Well, we could argue there's a card reader, that's an input device, there's a keypad, there's various buttons, and also there's a security camera at the top, all input devices. There's also some output devices. We've got a monitor. We've got a printer to print you out a receipt. We've got a speaker in the right hand corner and there must be some form of actuator or motor that helps to dispense the cash. 